Hello students of dynamics, this is Dr. Dan Baker and today's lecture is going to focus on projectile motion. Now the reality of projectile motion is it uses the same equations as Cartesian xy motion, so same equations as xy curvilinear motion. And it really just has, it's a special case of xy curvilinear motion, and that special case is related to the acceleration. So the acceleration vector for projectile is commonly equal to zero, comma, negative, whatever gravity, the gravitational constant in the unit system of your problem. Okay, so um, no horizontal acceleration. Of course, this is neglecting air resistance. Now, air resistance would apply both in the x and the y direction, but commonly we'll neglect that. And if we neglect air resistance, then we come up with this as our acceleration vector. Okay, so just a negative gravity in the y direction, or which is also the negative j hat direction. So let's go ahead and look at an example. Now, this example is a little bit more involved than in a common projectile motion because it's going to be of launching a ball down a hill. Okay, so here's an example of a ball launched. down a hill. All right, so here is the diagram. If you could draw this line a little bit less than 45 degrees, it turns out that the slope is, comes from a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, so the angle is actually about 37 degrees. So let me go ahead and add that information here. So this slope is proportional to a 3, four, five triangle. Here is point A. And we are going to um, launch this ball perpendicular to the slope. Okay, so perpendicular to the slope initially. So this would be VA. And then gravity is going to start to come into play and it'll end up with some kind of a curve like this and land down the slope. And we're going to say the landing point down here is point B. All right, so there are two fundamental approaches to working a problem like this. Um, the one that we're going to take is to actually assign an axis system through point A. I'm going to use a typical horizontal X, vertical Y. Now you could also align your axis system with your slope. Now if you did that, you need to break this gravitational acceleration into two different components. You'd basically have, call it a AX prime and an AY prime, and they're going to be components of that gravitational acceleration. But I'm going to keep this um, horizontal and vertical, and then we have a distance down slope here, which we're going to call the length R. So the problem tells us that we have a ball is launched perpendicular to a hill slope and this hill slope is defined by that 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Um, at 15, so this is the velocity, initial velocity of the ball, 15 meters per second. And we want to find R. So find the distance down the slope where this ball goes. All right, just to, to put in some variables here, just to kind of make a few notes, we're going to say that this starts at um, time zero. Okay, so T naught is zero. We're going to say that X naught, because of where we define our axes, that that is zero. And that Y naught, because we also define our axes through point A, is zero. Okay, so if those show up in our equations, we know that we can put those um, values in instead. Now, getting into the process. So part A. 
or step A really, is we want to split VA into components. Because we know the total magnitude of the velocity, because we know the angle of the hill slope, we then also can resolve the components. Now let's zoom in here real quick to this diagram. And so if we have a three, four, five, where three is on the vertical and four is on the horizontal, it turns out that for our velocity, we also have a three, four, five. But in this case, it will be the three that's on the horizontal and then the four that's on the vertical, and then five along that um, angle. Now, another way you could do this, um, just to pop this out real quick, is that we know that this angle here, call this theta. Um, I also know that this angle here is theta because that arm, or excuse me, because this velocity is perpendicular to that surface. We basically have this translation of a horizontal angle to a vertical angle um, for that perpendicular vector. Okay, so that gives us some components then to split VA into components. Let me get my zoom ratio back here. That looks good. So we can write that we have VA sub X is equal to three fifths, right? Because three is along the horizontal, five is along the hypotenuse. So three fifths of 15. Now this is going to be a negative value, negative because it's going opposite the x axes. And so this is going to equal negative nine meters per second and VA sub Y. This is going to be the four fifths side of that right triangle. So four fifths times 15 and this equals 12 meters per second because it's going upwards in the same direction as my positive Y. That will give me a positive sign on my vertical component. Now, one key thing to think about when you're working on projectile motion problems is that time is the great unifier, okay? And it's really time and time alone that becomes a common variable between your motion in the X and your motion in the Y. Otherwise, everything's independent, okay? Your X velocities are independent of your Y velocities. Your X acceleration is independent of your Y acceleration. So if we use time as this great unifier, um, we can then use some of our projectile motion equations. The one that we're going to use involves all of the positions, the velocities, and accelerations. Okay, so we're going to use the common time to write independent x and y equations. All right, and the version of the equation we're gonna use, like I said, this is gonna be the X version. And that is that X minus X naught, noting that on your equation sheet, maybe it said S minus S naught, but we're talking about for X distances. So these are all gonna be X terms as related to position, velocity, and acceleration. Um, equal my velocity VAX times T, plus my acceleration in the x direction, which will turn out to be zero, but I'll go ahead and write this out, a sub x times t squared over two. I'm gonna write the same equation for my y terms, y minus y naught is equal to v a y times t plus a sub y times t squared over two. Okay, so there's my two different equations, isolated into x and isolated into y. Let's go ahead and mark off the things that go to zero. We have that x naught is equal to zero. We have no acceleration in the x direction, so that goes to zero. y naught is equal to zero. And that's it. And then we also, I guess, can go ahead and mark this and say that this is going to equal negative 9.81. Negative because the acceleration is going against the y axes. 
So my equation for my x ends up being x is equal to, and then again, substituting in our velocities that we just solved for right above, our negative 9 and 12, we end up with x distance equal to negative 9 times t, and y distance is a quadratic form, 12t minus 9.81 divided by 2t squared. Okay, we're going to end up actually with four equations on this problem. So let me go ahead and label these. We'll call this one number one and this one number two. All right, so the next step, call this step C, is that we need to figure out what's going on with this hill slope. Okay, so we need to find equation for hill slope. And the reason we need that is we need to know where the x can be at a given y, right? So we need this equation basically um, y as a function of x or x as a function of y. So given this 3, 4, 5 triangle, keep in mind that the slope is the rise over the run, okay? So I could draw in here, just draw it on top of the curve rise over run related to that slope. And so this is going to be rise of 3, run of 4. And this will be a positive slope because it's sloping up to the right. And then the intercept will be 0, right? So getting into this equation here, we'll use slope-intercept form. We'll say y is equal to m, which is the slope, times x distance, plus b, which is the y-intercept. So now putting in our known values, we find that our y is equal to 3 fourths times x, and then b goes to 0, right, because our intercept was 0. And if I wanted to, I could change this over into x as a function of y. Technically, it doesn't matter which direction you go in this. I was going in this direction, x is equal to 3 fourths times y, because I want to substitute in for this term right here. I just thought that would be an easy path forward working through some substitution. And so I'm going to call this equation number three. And so I am going to essentially put three into equation one. And in doing so, I end up with four thirds y equal to negative 9t. So if I solve for y, I can say that y is equal to negative 6.75 times t. And then I'm going to put this term into equation 2. Okay, So I'm going to call this one number 4. And so I'm going to put 4 into 2. So now I'm just kind of working through the algebra here. And we end up with negative 6.75 equal to 12 times t minus 4.905, which is that 9.81 divided by 2 times t squared. So then I can convert this into um, a polynomial um, quadratic. Okay, so I'm going to put these in order, 4.905 times t squared, and then my t term, plus 18.75t. Oh, I forgot a term here, just realizing looking at my coefficients, I was like, those don't add up. This here, you might have already caught this, but we need to bring in that t, just like we had a t right here, right? That's the equation we substituted in. I just forgot to write it in there at that point. So then back over to my black pen, and we have plus 0. Okay, so you can put this into a polynomial solver if you wanted to. Find your roots, and we find out that t is equal to 0, and t is equal to 3.822 seconds. And that's great, because we know that the ball is on the slope, both at A, also at B. And it took 3.822 seconds for the ball to get down to B. And so in the last step, basically, we use time as that great unifier to figure out our distance down the slope.
And so um, a couple of different ways we could do that. The path I chose on here, part D, is to find R. We know that our x distance from our equation 1 was equal to negative 9 times t, so negative 9 times 3.822. We find out that the x distance is equal to negative 34.398. That's in meters. And then, once again, multiple ways we could feed this into our y equals mx plus b equation. Um, we also could take a look at this. The way I thought about that was as a right triangle. So here's my triangle with this as x. This is y. This is r. My angle here, again, is related to this 3 on the rise, 4 on the run, 5 on the hypotenuse right triangle. And so I can use this relationship, actually, and right triangle trig to say that x is equal to r, and this is going to be the cosine of theta, but the cosine of theta also in this case happens to be equal to the adjacent term times the hypotenuse, okay, so coming from this adjacent, excuse me, adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, divided that by the hypotenuse, so r times 4 divided by 5, realizing here that this 4 fifths is equal to the cosine of theta. Okay, using that 3, 4, 5 right triangle. And so uh, rearranging this equation and putting in our known value of x, we can find that r is equal to 43 meters. All right, so that's kind of the basic walkthrough of one of these projectile motion problems. The key steps on projectile motion problems um, on any projectile motion problem, quite honestly, a key step is right here. It's using these kind of full, uh, the full equations that involve the position, the velocity, and the acceleration, and time, right, all wrapped up in one equation. And you can do that both in the x and also in the y. For this problem, we need an additional equation down here based upon our um, hill slope angle. So we added that. Um, as an additional equation to resolve that our elevation was going to change of that hill slope. And then in the end, we ended up doing some algebraic manipulation to solve for our unknown. In this case, that unknown was the value r. Hope this was informative to work through a more complex projectile motion problem, and I hope you have an awesome day.